button if we've got our audio issues fixed. Hopefully. Should be fixed. Look at that. Yeah. I've got there you. Go. Perfect. I think that's awesome. I I I, I I I am uh I'm glad we don't have to go the Tony Schiavone route, where, where I just have to make up what, what with what you're saying, because I will not be as funny as Schiavone. Do a little, draw, but, do a little, uh, draw a little picture. Yes. You can kind of interpret. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, we have got uh, you, you know what 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 is what is hilarious about that is uh, is Will at one point, and it was last year, I I interviewed a uh, a, a webcam girl, a, a porn star. And uh, her mic halfway through failed, so they got out a, uh, a, a one of those uh, white dry erase things, and they just answered my questions that way. So, uh, it and you look like you might have a dry erase board laying around that office somewhere. So if need be, we we oh, we. Yeah. Out here. <laughs> The deep rises. The deep rises. <laughs> we, have, we have got a great guest with us today. He joins us live here on the old Skip Skype, the old Skype a Rooney, as they say. And uh, Will, talk to us a little bit about your background before we get into uh, to everything here. Sure. Well, you know, I've been sure, well, you know, I've been working in public relations for about eleven and, uh, years, we're based, uh, and uh, we're based at Washington uh, D.C. And, and, DC. Actually and actually, before that, I lived in, in, in and studied um, in China. So this, this project, um, so awesome. this project I want to talk to you today about it. Yeah, it's a little bit near and dear to me. I've experienced some of the things firsthand, which I think a lot of people would find shocking. You know, just growing up in this country. So, a little bit of background about me and and. Uh, this, you know, thanks for having me on. Yes, yes. Now, um, tell us a little bit about uh, living over there and experiencing some of this firsthand. Well, the first well, thing you'll, the first realize, thing you you'll realize if you go to China the, is that uh, the same kind the, uh, of the same kind internet freedom, freedom we have over here, you don't have over there. Have over there. And I'll give you a couple of examples. Uh, sites, like Twitter, uh, sites like Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, they, they YouTube, don't like those, they, they don't like those over in China. Blocked. In fact, they're blocked. So they, over so there, they, they have, over there, they have great, something called the Great Internet Firewall. Internet firewall. And essentially, and the, the, government essentially the, the government censors websites from people uh, if they determine uh, that the website, that is, that the website somehow is somehow subversive to, uh, to uh, the Communist, uh, the communist power Party's over power over in China. And so that could be a couple of different things. Obviously, you mentioned you you had interviewed somebody who's an adult entertainer. Yes. And stuff is that is very frowned upon is, is very frowned upon over there. They're you know they're pretty socially conservative. They don't they don't like that kind of stuff. That any kind of pornographic that, industry. So that stuff like that is going to be on the uh, down. But also political, uh, but websites. So political so websites. So there's there's no free speech in China. There's, there's no First Amendment. And the the and the, the Communist Party, which took power in 1949, wants to keep power. And so they are very threatened by any kind of information that's unflattering to them, in particular, or about China in general. So I'll give you a couple. So I'll give you a couple examples. I mentioned that social media sites are banned. And one big reason for that is the government, the government, uh, the governing party, the governing communist party, does not want people, to, not organize. Want people to organize. Uh, they don't like, uh, any, they don't kind like any kind of mass demonstration, and so any kind of, online, so any kind of online, organizing online organizing or platforms, or that, platforms that allow you to exchange, exchange ideas freely, ideas freely or, interact or you know, interact with people who have different ideas from you that are not necessarily uh, approved up by the government. Uh, by the government. That's all very highly looked down upon, and as well as historical events that are unflattering to the communist party. So, for example, when I was living over there. Google, you would go on Google, and you would do a Google, and you would do a Google search image search for Tiananmen Square. Tiananmen Square. And, you know, a lot of people, and, you know, lot of people in this country are probably familiar with what happened in 1989 when there were some, when big, there were some uh, big pro-democracy uh, protests by college students in Beijing, students in, Beijing, in, Beijing uh, in a very, uh, in a very, uh, very, historical, uh, area very historical area called Tiananmen Square. Tiananmen Square. And the government came in, after, government some, came in debate after some debate and basically squashed this pro-democracy pro movement. And they killed thousands of people. They murdered. And so when you went to search Tiananmen Square in Google Images, were blocked all the images were blocked out by Google. Wow! Couldn't even see of imagery Square of Tiananmen because Square that's how, because that's how, how much the government over there, government over there wanted to censor what, happened, what actually day. happened that day. Holy smokes! We have so got. It, it, yeah, so it, it's weird. And, you know, I, I was stopped by secret police on one occasion. Uh, I was followed on at least one more where we noticed the guy probably constantly. So China is has gotten worse under the current president Xi Jinping. Um, you know, back there, but you know, back there, I was living there in 2005 and 2008. It was a different country, guy running the country Tao. named Hu Jintao. Um, so, but still, so, but still the elements that they have today, that they are, have today are, are kind of what they use today on, on, on so crack. Back then, so back then, you then, had people who make sure that you know you were not up to any kind of pro Tibet. Uh, independence movement, or, independence anything movement or anything that you were just a normal foreign teacher over there, or a student who was studying Chinese, uh, um, 
uh, and now, and you know, now, with the you know, with, with the advanced with advanced in technology, you know, they have now, you know, they have now facial recognition cameras. So we've seen that kind so of we've seen that kind of technology in the U.S., uh, which is you know, uh, which first, is, you know, first seems kind of cool, but they always have a but way, of, always spinning have a way of spinning it and using it to like the worst to abuse to abuse human rights. So that you know, they 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 can essentially now track individual people automatically with these giant camera systems they have set up across cities across China, and so it's essentially a way of automating spying on you. And, wow. the, you know, so any kind of technology where <laughs> they can find a way to you know, abuse the technology to um, solidify their control over people, they will find a way to do it. We have got a great got guest it. with us today. He joins us live here in a big broadcast. And uh, Will joins us, Managing Director, American Security Institute. And uh, it was founded to educate Americans about Chinese government influence in the U.S., Will is also Managing Director of the Center for Consumer Freedom, and uh, they promote consumer choice and fight radical activists that want to reduce it. Uh, he also has a, a degree from the College of William and Mary, and uh, as he mentioned earlier, he's previously lived in Beijing. And uh, so, Will, um, what do you make of all the, all the stuff going on politically and, and everything in the, in the world around us? Well, I think we're at well, a I think very we're defining, at moment, a very when defining moment when it comes to our, our relationship with China and, China and, and in terms of geopolitical uh, politics, for uh, politics for the rest of the century, of the century in fact. Um, we, we have essentially, we, we what, have we're essentially what we're going back towards. We live in this very strange time of very COVID, and, time of COVID very and very, very economically devastating times. But what's going on with China gives me some hope for the political process in Washington, D.C. and some hope for U.S. standing in the world for the rest of the century. Um, in the sense that we've in, in the sense that we a, a, a rare bout of bipartisanship. People of here, in, 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 here in Washington D.C. on both sides of the aisle have come together and kind of push back against China, uh, against China and, and in a way you don't see very commonly here in D.C., which is great. Um, um, but, let's but, but let's start with the bigger picture so, here. So what yes. So what does the Chinese government want? want? You know, at the end of the you know, day. The of the day. Um, and, what um, want, and what they want, and, words, and this is in their own words, is they want global domination. They wanna, you know, they right, wanna, now, the right now, the world has one superpower, and it's us. Um, and um, I think that's a great and thing. I think that's a great thing. We're not perfect, but we're leaders in freedom and democracy, and that's great. Um, and China wants to, and China wants to supplant us. They want to knock us down, and they want to be the only global superpower. And that's, and that's bad for a lot of different reasons. But for the, uh, the big one would be the Chinese values that, that, that the government wants to export across the country, across the globe, across are, across the globe things are, like are things like corruption, uh, things like uh, the, anti-human rights. Anti-human rights. They look based on how they run their own country. They put people in concentration camps these days. So you know, this is this is you know, this is this is, is very bad. We don't want to be China. supplanted by China. And obviously, it's not, and obviously it's not going to happen overnight. But the reason we found but the reason we founded our, our project. So this is the American Security Institute. And our website is China owns us. Dot com. It is kind of, it is kind of <laughs> wow, well. great, yeah, great, great URL, com. brother. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we, we want, China we, owns us. Dot com. About what's been going on. Very quietly, you know, very quietly the Chinese, the Chinese have, 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 have kind of built influence and, and extended their soft power, uh, as, they call, it, uh, as they would call it. So not hard power like military, but but soft power in terms of their influence. You know, across this country in very subtle ways, but in very major ways over the past 20 and years and they've done it in different countries around the globe too and it, essentially they're, and it, they're, essentially they're, they're kind of very quietly trying to put, very quietly put, trying to put the pieces in place to, for them to again, again become, become the the, the only global, global superpower and to and to, and to run the show globally and to supplant, and to supplant us, to, us to knock the u.s down and so things, and so they've, done things they've done in the u.s and in other countries we seem to be more openly aggressive on the military front as well in recent years um, but I think a, a, lot, but of I think a, a lot of people don't understand just how much influence the Chinese, much influence have, in the Chinese have in our education system, system, in our media, uh, in, the uh, in the companies they own that are U.S. companies, companies uh, in, the, uh, the, in the, the tech race. Um, and, and so a lot of that comes down to China's overall global ambition. But in the next five, but years, the next five it's years, it's going to be a very critical time. In that five years, the Chinese government has a plan called the Made in China 2025 program. And what that means is, oh. what that means so is the, so the, the Communist Party, Party they, they say, they, they hey, say, our, hey our, the way we're going to uh, maintain, uh, maintain and achieve our, and achieve goals, our goals of global domination, of global domination is, to is to dominate these, dominate these 10 fields of technology. Of technology. And so those fields, and so those fields include aerospace, uh, we're talking robotics, we're talking here, robotics ocean here, ocean engineering, uh, railways, uh, railways, energy. Energy. So they want to. So they they, wanna, they've, they've, they've zeroed in on these key present and future technologies that they want to have a stranglehold on, and essentially be have the rest of the world hands. feeding out of their hands. They want to be the. the they want to be the, the dominant uh, power, uh, in fields, power in those and fields, that will and that will allow them to essentially uh, dominate the, uh, dominate the rest dominate of the world if they can dominate those tech fields. 
We have got a great guest with us today. He joins us live here in a broadcast. Will Coggin is with us. He's a managing director, uh, American Security and uh, American Security Institute. And uh, so, living over there in in Beijing and being around that that structure and that system for as long as you you were, um, I I I have a theory. <laughs> that I want to get your thoughts on. Um, I I noticed right around I don't know December or January there was a lot of uh, protests over there, and they were gaining a lot of steam uh, on social media, and a lot of folks were, were were talking about the protests, and then all of a sudden everybody got COVID nineteen. <laughs> And so my the theory I had was that China uh, released this thing on those protesters to shut them the hell up. And then they didn't realize that they had it and they started communicating with people and jumping on planes. And then all of a sudden the whole world gets it. Is 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 that something that that could happen I would say it could happen. I would say it could happen. I, again, the evidence, again, on, the evidence like on something like this, from a, for the, from a counterintelligence point of view, I don't know that we'll ever know, know, where, we'll ever know where it really comes from. Well, yeah. Just yeah. because the Communist Party lies. The Communist Party lies. They, 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 lie, all, they, oh, they yeah. lie all the time. So oh, yeah. So whatever story they have is, you take it with a grain of salt. And of course, we, they will never let our own investigators over there to try to do the forensic analysis. Oh, They would never allow that. Yeah. So with, it, that caveat, with, with that you know, caveat, certainly, you know, certainly given their track, uh, record, given their track you record, record, you could say it's plausible. Uh, the plausible yeah, the most plausible theory I've heard from that, uh, from that, 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 that has some backing from U.S. intelligence, uh, at, least publicly, uh, at least publicly, is they said it came from a bioweapons bio lab, lab that's, outside that's outside of Wuhan. So the story, well, yeah. So the original story was it came from some kind of like live animal market in the city that might have had some wildlife. And again, that sounds plausible. But since then, that was the original theory back in March. And since then, they said, actually, we were pretty sure. Actually We're pretty confident this actually came from a government lab, lab in Wuhan that uh, in does, Wuhan that does research, on, research on, on, on these kinds you know, of these kinds of potential bioweapons. Bio uh, yeah. Um, so, so, so again. So again, one way or the other, I think you can certainly make the case that the Chinese government has used this crisis to further their own ends. And I think the, the one outcome of, of having this pandemic start uh, was, yeah, it was, yeah, it allowed them to to really uh, disperse those protests that were happening. They were making them look very bad in Hong Kong. Yes. And allowed them to... You know, get rid of that, get rid of that, and then quietly, in their own way, in their own way round you know, round up these so-called these, these troublemakers, troublemakers who just want the right to just vote. The right to vote yes, yes. Uh, down in Hong Kong. So I, I think wherever it did come from, they they are very crafty in, in using uh, things to their advantage. In fact, the Chinese word for for crisis, you know, one, it's two characters, and one of the characters is is opportunity. The other is danger. <laughs> uh, so it's it's AG in Chinese, That's a hell of a deal. danger and opportunity. So. It, you know, from a very practical it's point very of view, plausible. You, you could let a pandemic, it's very, very dangerous to an economy, <laughs> certainly, but also an opportunity if you have that wow. kind of mindset of authoritarianism. And, hey, we can also use this to, you know, get rid of all these, these pro-democracy people who are causing us problems. That's a hell of a deal. Uh, Will, before we let you go, my friend, uh, how do we find you online, uh, get involved with you, all that? Yeah, well, you can go to our website. Yeah, well, you can go to our website, which is ChinaOwnsThis.com. China We've got a, a short video, a short video there. You can share on social media. And we have a white paper there that goes into more detail about Chinese soft power, soft power influence in universities in America, in America as, well as, uh, as well as they own about, they own about 2,400 companies uh, in, America well. uh, in America as well. And these are, these are, and these are, these are not your local bagel shop here. This is some serious companies like in healthcare, you know, genomics companies, aerospace, media companies. They own the largest movie theater chain in the United States. Yes. So there's, it's, a major there's, there's a major that purchase that the that Chinese, Chinese interests have made over the past, over the past years that I think would startle a lot of people. And it gives them, again, it's sort of a leg up in this, this tech race against America where they want to knock us down. So ChinaOwnsUs.com is our website. Well, uh, I appreciate you making time for us today. Thanks for coming on and chatting with us. And uh, <laughs> hey, have yourself hey, for a wonderful day, my friend. Thanks for doing Skype with us today. I really appreciate it. Absolutely. Thank you, sir. There he goes. Dan, uh, Will Coggin, our next guest. Daniel's coming up here in a few moments. Uh, I'm